on yep good evening everybody how y'all doing tonight good uh if you'll stand we're going to sing that song up there god's wonderful book divine Oh my. 
so happy, always so happy, God's wonderful book divine. Amen. Did I sing too slow? I was told I was too slow. Hmm. Uh, now, if you'll grab your hymn books and turn with me to hymn number 464, who is on the Lord's side. I couldn't quite remember it, so we'll have this. side who will serve the king who will be his helpers others lives to bring who will leave the world side who will face the foe who is on the lord's side Here is uh, Brother Eccles. All right. Good to see everybody here this evening. Do we have any first-time visitors? First time. Okay. Uh, you, you folks walked you walked in, and that's your family, I assume? Yes. And whereabouts do you reside? And as far as what location? Missouri. Oh, Missouri. Yeah. You came out here because you knew about this church. We came all the way here and dropped in with us. You're visiting some folks, right? We, we are um, taking the sample on his fourth grade national park tour. Wow, that's great. So we don't have to go down there and we're heading to um, Bridget and Hill Park and Lake area. Some people are from here that we started stopping. Yeah, we're delighted you came. What part of Missouri? Near Springfield. Springfield. Okay. okay, amen. We're delighted that you're here. If you're glad that we have our guest tonight, would you let them all know with a hearty amen. 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 Okay. Well, let's uh, look to the Lord. We want to definitely be in prayer for uh, Pastor Storm. Uh, Mrs. Storm had told us that they had to put in uh, some uh, two double stents and uh, I guess two locations in the heart, the arteries. So that is uh, something we need to hold our pastor up uh, before the Lord. And uh, we'll be taking other uh, prayer requests uh, momentarily from the prayer sheet. But let's look to the Lord now. Heavenly Father, we do ask that you'll bless this service. And may Christ be exalted. May 
your will be done for each one of our hearts and lives. We ask for our pastor. We hold him up before the throne of grace. And we ask that you would touch him and give him strength and healing and encourage Mrs. Storm. And we'll thank you, Lord, and ask you to bless this service tonight. In Christ's precious name, we ask it. And God's people said, amen. Amen. What do we have now? Oh, we have time for two requests. Uh-oh, make them good requests. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, that I knew that. 57. 57. 57. I'll give it a try. Years I've spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing it was good for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty. God's word at last my sin I learned then I trembled at the law I spurned till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary Verse 3, now I've given to Jesus everything, now I gladly owe him as my king, now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty. Drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to men. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. kids back there signing the song that's awesome they were signing us yeah that is awesome thank you uh any other requests yes sir 109 109 i think i kind of let's see here oh is this the one i messed up last week i think it is can, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll swing it somehow. There's a call coming over the restless waves in the lights, in the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, in the light, in the light. In the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. In the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Verse 2, we have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. In the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. 
in the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Verse 4, let us not grow weary in the work of love, send the light, send the light, let us gather jewels for a crown above, send the light, send the light, send the light. Chuck, I think, raised his hand. The old rugged cross? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 56. Yes. I, I know that one. <laughs> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Trim it a little bit? Okay. Uh, oh, no, praise it. I'm thinking, yeah, you go ahead and take praise. praise. Okay. I thought, I thought so. I, I was thinking praise. Mr. So. Dana in the back. Yes, sir. Yesterday I had my yearly checkup, and I uh, had the mail, and I, all the numbers, all the tests, and the EKGs, and all this stuff, that, that everything's going on. So Amen. Going on. Amen. Yep. Good. Two years now. Two years. Two years. Yep. Oh. Anybody else? Anybody else? Chuck? I had to pray for my salvation and the church family here and the fellowship we have. And yeah. Amen. 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 Mr. Nick? Oh, 
Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Huh? <laughs> okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, at this time, we'll have uh, announcements. Let me get those. Or you got them? You want me to do it? You do it? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay. All right. Right after uh, the announcements, we will, well, let's see. We're going to take a uh, prayer request right after the announcements, and then we'll have the chorus of the month and then the offering. How many of you are glad you're in church tonight? Say amen. 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 Okay. Uh, the... Um, Announcements coming up January, mm, let's see, 24th to the 25th is the teen conference, and I believe it's over in Valley Baptist. And then January 26th, Noisy Buckets. And all the money given that the children walk around with in the pails is for building. That's right. And then be in prayer about this big lot across the street. Amen. And that's a possibility for the church. January 26th, Mark Gray, 26th in the evening, annual uh, business meeting. 29th, missionary will be with us. February 4th, men's breakfast. February 8th, Valentine's dinner. Wow, boy, that sounds good. February 9th, Craig Wagner. February the 14th, uh, Tug. The 15th, Fellowship. 22nd, movie night, Noisy Buckets, 23rd, Tug on the 28th, that's Teens Under God's Guidance, and then the 29th will be the uh, Trap Shoot. So this is uh, a lot of good things going around, and along rather, and happening in the church. So at this time, why don't we do this? Let's take... And we'll look at prayer requests. And here's what we have in addition that you may want to add. Brother Will is unable to be with us. His back, he's, he's had a back injury that is now recurring. So we need to pray for him. He is home. Could not even come to unlock the building. And then over on, on the illness, uh, Beulah has a uh, lung infection. And that is Dana's sister-in-law. So we need to uh, pray for her. And then a man by the name of John. And he is, how is the relation, Dana? Yeah, he, he, he doesn't have a relation with uh, the nine weeks of pregnancy. Okay, and he has stage four cancer. Yeah, and so that probably originated from pancreatic uh, cancer. So pray for him. And then Lauren... Hall for healing and salvation. All right, do we have um, other prayer requests that we'd like to add? I think we need to pray for Mr. Pardon me? For our president? Did you say that? Is that what you said? My, I got a broken, my hear, I've got to be in the VA tomorrow. Oh, for faith, yeah. Yeah, amen. Yep. All right. So faith for her pregnancy is, uh, for those of you that know her close, is she carrying okay? Or? That's her daughter. Yeah, yeah, she is carrying. Oh, I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm sorry. Okay. 41 years old. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Nick. All right, anybody else? Well, let's uh, look to the Lord now. And uh, if he is not on our prayer list, we need to pray for our nation. And I mean this with all sincerity, for God will preserve and protect America until the rapture. 
and then that he'll put a hedge of protection about our president, President Trump, and Vice President Pence. And uh, I've been down the pike a little bit. I saw the Nixon impeachments and others. And this is a fiasco. And I'm not being political. This is, you might as well take this whole thing and put it in a bar room and everybody's swinging at each other because that's about what it boils down to. So just pray that God will protect our president, vice president, and protect our country. Our economy is the highest it has been in like 60-some years now. And nobody can say he's doing a bad job. So we just need to um, pray for revival in our country. And then the Lord will have his way in the election in November 2020 of this year. All right. So we have on prayer request, faith promise missions, the church finances, then the food bank, government leaders to make godly decisions, and then uh, for William for guidance, the O'Briens for guidance, Victor and Kathy for guidance, Jimmy Montoya guidance, Deborah Garcia, uh, Kaylee Garcia, uh, Ricky Cerna for guidance, also these, Christian Gooden guidance, Daniel Quint uh, Quintella guidance, uh, Roe Guidance, Richard and Laura, Fred, uh, Fred Laura, uh, guidance, Dolly for guidance, uh, Ariana Garza for guidance, Eddie for guidance, Kathy for pregnancy, uh, for our Jeep that we can get it out of the shop. It needs to be out of the shop. You say, why are you praying for our Grand Cherokee? It's been there eight months, that's why. So, and they still have been unable to find the issue. And then for uh, our students, and then Chuck Thomas for uh, wisdom and knowledge of the Bible. Then we have Will for his back, faith for uh, pregnancy, and then praises, God's answer to prayer, faithfulness of the people, uh, lives that God has changed, and God's marvelous healing. And then the ones uh, saved this week. So let's write a name down here. And that is um, last Sunday, Robert uh, Vieira, V-E-A-R-O, Vieira. And then his wife, Jasmine. Jasmine was saved this morning in her house just down from the church. And uh, so now they're both saved, and they have committed, and they want to be here Sunday. So they need to get baptized. We talked about that. All right, missionaries. The Dean family from Mongolia. Navarro family, military in Japan. Gary and Nancy Storm, Global Camp uh, Ministries. Tim Erling, Juarez, Michigan, or uh, Mexico, excuse me. John McDaniels, Navajo Indians, Jim and Myra Wright, Mission Relief, uh, the Sanders family to China, the Radcliffs, Mexico, and then for illness, Charles Thomas, that um, uh, his uh, dad has diabetes and um, needs, uh, and for the, I guess, the knee surgery, Chuck Thomas for his knee and wrist, Ryan cancer, Carl cancer, <clears throat> Chuck heart cancer, uh, Jasmine cancer, Brenda, who was blind, Cynthia Allen, neuropathy, uh, Scarlett Thibodeau has uh, health problems, Nick's wife for her back, David Moore for his uh, coma, Shane Eldridge's illness as GBS is making progress. Delane, brain damage. Christina, high blood pressure and migraines. Laura Allen, ABS. Uh, my wife for uh, continued recovery from her heart procedure. If you would pray for her. Two nights ago, she got woke up in the middle of the night 
and her defibrillator that was implanted alongside her pacemaker started sending shocks. So it's not, the heart did not stop, but the heart's trying to get her regular. So just if you would pray for her on that. And then uh, Tuck for recovery, uh, Chris, recovery, Kenny Mincy, brain tumor, Mary Hunt, Zill, Pastor Storm, recovery from uh, heart surgery. As we mentioned, two double stents. Penny Garrison, uh, heart surgery, apparently, or heart issues. Uh, again, Beulah, lung infection, Dana's sister-in-law. John has stage four cancer. Lauren Hall for healing and salvation. Now here we have salvations, the food bank workers, people who come to uh, Florence Baptist, unsaved relatives, Ray Thomas, Jasmine, Deborah Dalton, Ricky Cerna, Josh Myers, Joshua, and Mark and Stephanie. And then we have Richard and Fred Laura. And then we need to pray for all of our military as um, things are starting to heat up a little bit in the Middle East, we need to pray for all of our men and women that are over in the Middle East right now and then around the world. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening and our hearts are open. And Father, our, our, our arms are open to your will for our lives. We ask that you'll bless and answer prayer for each and every one on this list that you'd receive the honor and the glory. We ask that you'd save those that are unsaved and bring healing and, Lord, encouragement to those that are, are needing encouragement. We ask that you'll bless our church, our Christian school, those that uh, work in the school, that, Lord, the school would continue to be blessed of your hand and that it would take great strides. And we love you and we thank you. And Father, we ask for each and every person that is here this evening that your hand of mercy would be with them and you would bless them. Meet their every need spiritually and materially. And we'll thank you now, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Brother Kevin's going to lead us in the chorus of the month. Y'all stand, and uh, we're going to have course of the month, and then we'll have a handshake. Number Hymn number 99. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? I have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Amen. Say howdy.
one more time. Here we go. Ready, kids? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, kids, very, very much. Good job. Ah, uh, the offering. <laughs> All right, this is another form of worship tonight. And we worship the Lord of our tithes and offerings. Would you ask uh, the blessing, please? Amen. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity today. Amen. Amen. That's okay. Let's take our Bibles and let's turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. If you do not have a, a Bible with you, I'm sure that your neighbor would be glad to uh, share the word of God with you. Okay. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read the uh, first nine verses. <clears throat> Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so shall or so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not... Uh, from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper 
whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of, good, and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8 is going to be our text for the message. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Father, we ask now that you'll bless the reading of your word. And Lord, we ask that you'll help us, that we might hide it in our heart, and that the word of God would be a blessing and something that would strengthen and bless us spiritually. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to be speaking tonight on a needful topic. How to stand when it is not popular. And boy, I'll tell you what, are we not living in the days now that it's getting to be that way more intensely? CNN, not very long ago, said that Christians, when they pray, ought to keep it to their self. That was an offense, but it was an attack on Christianity in the name of Christ. Now, Joshua, at this point of reading, has now assumed the leadership role of the children of Israel. You remember that it was this same Joshua that spied the land for the Lord with Caleb, and he brought back the truth concerning the land and all its occupants. It is this same Joshua that we've read about that stood for right throughout the enti his entire life. He was, however, a man with a servant spirit. A lot of times we get the idea that a man or a, or a woman that has a servant spirit, why they're just meek and mild-mannered and low-keyed, and, and that, that really is not the case at all. Uh, you can be, uh, literally have a servant's heart and spirit, but at the same time, you can stand for right throughout all your life. A man will never lead until he learns to follow. It is rightfully said that behind every good pastor, there is a good wife. If she is to lead the women, then she must be willing to follow. These were some very difficult times. A great leader has just been called home. And Moses has gone to the Lord. And now comes the great test. And the great test is new leadership for God's perfect plan. God does have a perfect plan. Every leader is different. Leaders are different by personality. Leaders are different by intensity of their belief in spiritual things and, and so on. Now, this passage, by the way, affords some very good lessons for our lives today. So let's be sure tonight that we make, we, we make sure we do not miss these lessons that God has for us. Now, there are four areas, and we're going to keep this trimmed as the ship gets to sailing, amen? And I sent uh, Kevin a text, and I said, what did I say? Ship ahoy, ship ahoy right. And, uh, and so, you know, we're going we're to get this uh, boat and this ship running. Well, there are four areas that we need to have uh, courage uh, today. First of all, you need courage to start. Look at verse 3, if you would. Notice it says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you 
as I said unto Moses. Now, in verse 3, notice he says, that have I given unto you. We need to, first of all, believe the Lord. What God tells us, we need to have faith and believe God. And then, second, we need to claim his promises. Don't be overwhelmed in the midst of your circumstances. Circumstances are something that God's people should never be found under, like under the deck of a table. We are always living on the top, the mountain, if you please. And we're walking with the Lord, and we claim his promises, and we make sure we don't get overwhelmed. Verse 4, notice, it says, from the wilderness, under the great river. And then it says, under the great sea. Later in that verse, what does he say? Shall be yours. What a promise. Wow, that is great. And then thirdly, we need to trust his presence in our life. Listen, whether we're in this auditorium this evening listening or you're listening on live stream, perhaps in your home or perhaps place of business, we need to claim his promise, literally, and trust his presence in our life. Look at verse 5. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. My goodness, the Lord just loves us dearly. When, uh, when we started uh, the uh, church out in, uh, in, in Berlin, uh, uh, Vermont, and I almost said New Hampshire because it is a Berlin, New Hampshire, but we started, it's between the capital of Montpelier and a city to the south by the name of Barrie, B-A-R-R-E. And I believe I've used this illustration once here, but nonetheless, I'd like to illustrate it again. We were going we to start this church we went out by 100% faith. We did not know any person, not one, literally. And we got down to the point where we're renting a house, and we got down to the pocket change that I had, and my wife had a little bit in her purse, and I counted it, and if I remember right, it was a quarter, it was a dime, and it was three pennies. How much is that? 38 Sense, and we and I we still had at home we had Matt our oldest son Matthew, and we had Joel. Matthew lives in uh, west of Traverse City, about 15, 20 miles. Joel lives down by Cleveland, Tennessee, and uh, both have families. But we all got on our knees, my wife and the two boys, and we prayed. We laid that thirty-eight cents down, and we called upon the Lord and said, "Lord, look." This is what we've got. And you know what God began to do? See, my wife was looking for a job. How soon was that after you got that job? You remember? Pardon? Yes. And that was in the middle of the week we were praying. So she got a job and it was in, uh, it was like in management. You were assistant manager and she also did the books for, uh, you ever heard of Woolworths? Yeah, and then uh, not long after that, I got a job with the Green Mountain Power and, uh, and working on their vehicles of all things and, and so on. And so God began, he immediately began to supply our needs through our labor. Now, secondly, in, in this how to stand when it's not popular, to stand up for the Lord. Second, you need courage to take the right stand. Your stand must be right. Notice in verse 6. Notice what he says. Be strong and of a good courage. For this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land. Excuse me. Which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So here it is. They're going to. Divide the land. Dana, I'm going to get this away from me a little bit. You can turn it up if you have to. Okay. All right. So here is the result of doing what's right. You do right. Bob Jones Sr. used to say, do right till the stars fall and keep doing right. You just keep doing right. Well, here it is. The results of doing right. It's twofold. Number one, the end 
will turn out right. Always will. Notice verse 6. Be strong. The word strong here uh, in the Hebrew Chaldean language means to prevail over or to prevail through something. You're going through something. You're going to prevail over it. God's going to give you strength to go through the trials of life. The, and keep this in mind. Whatever you do, don't miss this. The end never, never justifies the means. The end never justifies the means. But the right means will always justify the end or the outcome. Amen. Now, the second twofold, you will grow in uh, character. Look at verse 6. He says, end of good courage. Now, in this passage, it's speaking of courage as being a form of determination. One thing for sure Satan cannot do. He cannot stop a determined people of God that are living for the Lord. They know why they're living for him. Uh, for him. They have a foundation, and that foundation is the Word of God in their life for themselves and for their family. Now, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 says this, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. There's a man by the name of Croft M. Pence, P-E-N-T-Z, and he said the following, he said, the people to worry about are not those who openly disagree with you, but those who disagree with you who are too cowardly to let you know that they don't agree with you. Those are the ones to watch out for. And we're talking about having courage. Courage is not blind. God's word keeps our heart intent and our vision becomes sharper. The third point about how to stand for the Lord when it's not popular. You need courage to complete what you start. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do uh, according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. There's three thoughts here. First of all, to believe and obey God's word. This is the first thing in verse 7. He says, observe to do all the law. That's the word of God, to do it all. Not part of it. Listen, we should never be smorgasbord Christians. Amen? Amen? We should never be that. We should take all the word of God as all the counsel of God for all of us in our lives. His plan will un unfold in our lives and for our lives as we believe and obey it. Now, I'm going to give you a true life story. I will not give a name. But when Edie and I were in Mesa and uh, I was pastor a church that was having extensive growth, growing very well. And uh, I, the church was young enough, we, uh, we still did not, our ministry there, we, it, we still did not um, have any staff. I think the church at that time was running maybe 90, and each year it would go up about 200. It was amazing. But we had a man in our church, in that church, I was the pastor. He came and he was a retired judge, and he wanted to join the church. Well, he and his wife walked the aisle, gave evidence of salvation, and uh, I want to be careful I don't give his name, because I love, love him and pray for him and respect him if he's still alive. But it did not take long after he joined our church that the nature of this man, the true nature, began to come to light. The problem was he, he wanted power in the church. And we had a business meeting with the men, and we met in a fellowship hall behind the auditorium. And uh, we had that meeting, and my goodness, I'm trying to remember when we had the meeting. Was that 
before Sunday school? I'm, I'm, just, I'm not recalling that, but I know it was about a half hour meeting. And we needed to get some direction on certain ministries we wanted to get going. We had two deacons. One was already there when we came. We had another one that the church voted on, good men, uh, good going out soul winning and everything, just good men. But then everybody, all the men, it was open, and the judge came. And I was conducting a meeting. I was sitting up at the head in these large tables. And we had maybe, I don't know, maybe 25 men there. And then in came the judge. And he sat, there was an open chair right about in the middle. And then the next thing I know, I'm talking, and then he, he said, uh, Pastor, you're really taking on too much for yourself. He said, I'd like to go ahead and conduct that meeting. And he began to talk like he was in charge of the meeting. And I interrupted him, and I just, the way I interrupted him, I, I said, now, uh, and I'm, I want to say his name, and I'm not, but brother so-and-so here, it sounds like he's got some ideas. Some may be good. We don't know that. But we're going to keep on being persistently talking in the, in the avenue and the direction we were before the judge came in. And so we just kept talking. And he realized he wasn't getting back. He wasn't going to get that thing back anymore. And the pastor was going to be the pastor. He was going to be one of the members of the church. We had leaders in our church that had leadership responsibility, and I trained them for that, and they carried out their responsibilities in a very good, godly manner. But I want you to tell, tell you that it took courage, listen, to stand up for what was right against what appeared to be bad, and God brought good out of it. God always does when you take the courage to stand even when it is not popular. And then secondly, we need courage to do God's will for our life. Look at verse 7. He says, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Uh, our oldest son uh, lives in Michigan. He, uh, he pastored that same church when the attendance had, it was now at a blossoming 350. And the church called him. I went back to help the sword of the Lord. Dr. Curtis Hudson had cancer and went, stayed with him in uh, Murfreesboro. Uh, family moved down. And our son became pastor. And pretty soon I heard that the church was running 500. And pretty soon it broke 600. And, uh, and there was a tugging in my heart, you know, like, well, I'd like to be back there. But it was, it was a good thing that we had gone. But I want to I tell you that our son graduated from the same Bible college that I did and my wife did, Midwestern Baptist College. Used to be located in Pontiac, Michigan. They moved it uh, over to uh, Lake Orion, I guess is where it is, right? So, and that's not far from Pontiac. But our son and I, we both graduated there. My son had been at Bible college for one year, so four-year college. Been there one year, and he called me, and he asked, he said, Dad, he said, uh, want to know what I thought about his changing colleges, Bible colleges. I didn't argue with him. I said, well, let me ask you this, Matt. Has God changed his mind for his will for your life? And we talked for a while more, and he hung up. It was a good, positive phone call. And he stayed there. He was considering going to Jack Kyle School, which was a good school, good soul winning college. Jack Kyle's would come to Midwestern and preach in the chapel and in Dr. Malone's church and vice versa. Uh, but the bottom line is if God calls you to a particular place, that's where you're supposed to stay and perform it. Now, listen to Romans eleven twenty nine, For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And then thirdly, it does make a difference whether you quit or whether you stay in the battle. Because the battle is the Lord's, and he'll equip you. Look at verse 7. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever 
thou goest. When you quit, you'll lose self-respect, you'll lose credibility, and you'll lose trust from those that know you personally. And here's our fourth and our last point, and we're going to be finishing pretty close 7 o'clock. Fourth, you need faith and courage to believe God. That's a challenge. The Lord is challenging us. Look at verse 8 and 9 and watch. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now the word of God will do something for us. Notice, we need to make God, we need to make God our pattern for life, for our life, God's word. Look at verse 8. That, uh, excuse me, thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. <coughs> How many of you ever <coughs> heard a, of a TV evangelist did he, did pastor announce us? Okay, how many of you ever heard of a TV evangelist by the name of Jack Van Empey? All right, several people. All right. My, world, my wife was his, when I was out on the road, he, uh, she was his executive secretary. Then <coughs> our daughter-in-law, her mother, is still working at Van Empey's. Barbara, she's been there how many years? 20, 30 years, yeah. Well, um, Jack Van Empey, just a few short days ago, 88 years old, went to be at the Lord. And, and I tell you, what, what an impact that uh, he made on people's lives. May not agree with him on everything, but he was a good man. He knew the Word of God. And there was something I think my wife caught from Dr. Van Empey, because how many Psalms do you have memorized right now about? Technically. Closer to 40, but 30. Yeah. She likes to say 30. And, <coughs> excuse me, we're have, we have devotions. Right now, we, we pick some. And, and by the way, <coughs> how many Psalms are there? Over a hundred, yeah. But are you aware those are not chapters? Those are books. They are books of the Psalms compiled. If you take the Gospel of John, you've got how many chapters? 20, is it 21? 20, 21. But those are all chapters compiled within the book of the Gospel of John. All of the Psalms are individual psalms that are compiled by the Holy Spirit and are logged together in the psalms itself. Now, 2 Timothy 2.15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Word of God will mold our lives and shape it. And then here's our last finishing point. If you do not, listen, all of us, if we do not learn to believe God now, you will fall when times get rough. You'll falter. You'll trip and you'll fall. Look at verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Here it is, the undergirding love and foundation the Lord gives us. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever 
thou goest. Listen, here's a good, here's a good phrase that a man out of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, he was a Southern Baptist, but he was very conservative. His church was run like an independent Bible-believing Baptist church that only used the King James, and that's all they used. So I have to, I, every time I watch a broadcast or listen, I just give them a salute. I would. But Adrian Rogers says the following, a faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. Did you hear that? A faith that hasn't been tested can't be trusted. Exercise your faith. Put God to the test in your life. Put your word, to, the, God's word to test in your life. Put your life at a test for the Lord and our servant spirit that we have. Be bold for Christ and in these trying times, stand up, stand up for Jesus, you soldiers of the cross. Amen. And that's what God wants of our life. He wants it so dearly and so badly. Listen, Jesus, the, the coming of at the rapture is getting so close, so close. I'll be working in my office and suddenly I get, I get this thought and it's just like, just like my heart is lifted up, not in pride, but lifted up in joy and I'm excited and I'm thinking, why is this? And suddenly the rapture, it's the rapture. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. 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 All right. What thou doest in a positive sense. The Lord said to Judas, what thou doest do quickly in a negative sense. But what we do for him, do it quickly for him, for Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads in prayer. We thank God for each and every one of you here tonight. And Pastor Storm, I believe you're probably watching. And we love you. We love you. Dana says you're watching, so you better be watching. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, we love you. Mrs. Storm, we love you. And we're praying for you that God will give you strength and that you will be released tomorrow. Father, we ask now that you'll bless each and every person here tonight. We ask that you'll be with our guests that are taking tour of the nation for the national parks and monuments. We ask you'll keep their journey exciting and they'll be happy and excited and return home safely. And we ask, Lord, that as we return Sunday, that we'll see a wonderful crowd of your people and that souls will be saved. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask this for your glory and honor. In Christ's people said, Amen. Amen. We're dismissed. Shake hands with at least three people. Uh, the food bank tonight. We have some stuff. We do have some. We have something, yeah. Amen. I just can't get it to the ground box, but we do have something. So the ground box is like a food bank. Just sometimes you can't get in the bank. Okay. <laughs> okay. Amen. We are dismissed. Did I say that? <laughs> Except Serena and Susie.